Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I hope you are enjoying the day. My name is Elliot, Elliot Ning. I am responsible for enterprise cloud solutions covering infrastructure modernization, data analytics, and AI at Google. Today, my topic is cloud AI from data to insight. I really wish I could meet you in person so I can you know, interact with you, understand better on your roles, on your background. I can ask questions, you can raise hands, that kind of activity. So for virtual sessions, it's not easy for me to do the level set. So what I'm going to do is I will start with foundation and maybe leave more open at the end so you can have the options to ask questions and explore more. All right, let's get it started. To begin with, I would like to share my favorite quote. It's from one of the most intelligent people in human history. This is my principle for designing solutions, particularly on implementing AI. So AI is a very complex subject. It involves large amount of data, large amount of computing power, and also strong expertise from different kinds of people. We need data scientists who understand and identify data trends and algorithms. We need data engineers who handle large volume data processing to make sure the right data in the right format at the right place. We also need AI system engineers who build, test, and deploy models and maintain the underlying AI infrastructure. So some of you may be doing a combined role, but of course, we are still going to need more people, right? So we need people from IT, we need people from product, we need people from marketing and other teams to actually achieve a valuable AI implementation for an organization. So how should we start? Here's my agenda today. So we will start by talking about AI. I will set the foundation, share some of the facts and challenges today in many business. And then let's discuss about different pathways to AI implementation, including data, methods, and some shortcuts. At the end, let's recap what we talked about today and focus on the directions where we can start. So first, let's quickly talk about AI in general. So here's a diagram to show what is included in AI. So many people think AI is just machine learning. So actually machine learning is only part of AI. AI is a broader category of many subjects, right? Like the one we mentioned, machine learning can also include robotics, computer vision, NLP and more. So for us to define AI, right? Artificial intelligence, let's first think about human intelligence. So what is human intelligence? Human intelligence is for people to learn, think, and apply knowledge. So we learn from experience. It could be things that we have done in the past, or we read things from the book, or we communicate with others. Think, right, to understand, to create, and convert the learnings into some kind of knowledge and then we apply the knowledge to solve problems. So for artificial intelligence, the machines can imitate human behavior in terms of intelligence, which means that the computers will learn from information and solve cognitive problems. And all these subjects usually, they don't work alone. For example, robotics. Many robots in the industry will not just perform simple tasks. They may use computer vision to identify objects, NLP and speech to communicate with humans, and machine learning to make decisions and recommendations. Making decisions and recommendations is a critical area in AI. So machine learning, which involves deep learning, is the core of AI. But what exactly is machine learning?
you may have heard different versions of definition. So after all, machine learning is to learn from data patterns and make predictions or decisions without programming the rules. It sounds very simple. For classic programming, we set the rules, we feed the data, and we get the results from the system. For machine learning, we do it differently, right? So we feed the data, we show the historical results, which we call the examples, and the system will figure out the rules for us. And then we can do to use the system with creative rules to get future results from new data. The concept itself is very simple, but the fact is human brain is extremely complex. So computers can only achieve just a tiny step to mimic the way that how our brains work, like how the deep neural network showing on the slide to recognize basic features, characteristics from the picture in order to tell whether it's a cat or dog. So here you can see it only has three neurons between the input and the upper layer, but human brains have like tens of billions of these layers. So you can imagine the technology is far behind. Okay, we just finished a quick review of AI. So now let's talk about some effects and challenges. Nowadays, companies do not just talk, they are doing AI. So this new strategy is transforming the business and impacting the industry. In a few months, by 2021, the majority of the enterprise applications some may already have and some are going to have AI features in different aspects to help users better understand their data. The industry is in good progress to turn vehicles right from traditional tools into intelligent systems in terms of autonomous capabilities in search and control environment, in warehouse support, and of course in public roads. The third one, it's very interesting, right? A research point out that only one tenth of the developers today can create custom ML models. So to me, this is the biggest factor that's slowing the overall AI implementation in most organizations. The ability of people to utilize innovative AI tools, if done properly, can ensure that more people can benefit from this revolution. So AI is rapidly trans transforming from hype into reality, and it's entering mainstream. Okay, we all understand AI is critical. Let's start using it. But it's not as easy as it sounds. As you look to bring AI into your organization, it's important to prepare for the challenges ahead. Although most enterprises have identified themselves as entities evaluating or using AI, but research shows less than 14%, right? Less than 14% of the AI projects are actually deployed into large scale production. You may be wondering why the rate is so low particularly for the significant effort involved. This can also lead to problems around understanding and explaining the ROI to your executives for any future investment in the space. So what things you need for considering AI? First, you're gonna need a very good problem to solve in order to bring values to your business. You will need a team that really understand how to create meaningful insight from your data. Three, you better have a large amount of data, ideally in organized format, because no data, no AI. Cleaner data, better AI. And the last one, of course, you need to think about how you deal with the large scale infrastructure, which may cross multiple platforms, because that is the industry trend. All right, deploying AI is very complex, how do we simplify it? In order to simplify the AI process, let's consider what are the key factors. We need good use case to show values. We need large amount of data for trainings 
And the last one, I personally believe you can find great values from the tools available on the market, particularly in the cloud. You may wonder why in the cloud? Because you will get the latest innovative AI toolings while having the benefits of cloud computing, which include high scalability, flexibility, pay as you go, DevOps, and more. So now let's take a look at the three factors individually. First one's use case. So there are four categories of analytics use case. Descriptive, things like aggregating business data during a period of time. For example, um, I want to know my total revenue last month, last quarter, or last year. Diagnostic. So we examine data with content to troubleshoot a problem, like discover a bottleneck in the system at scale. Predictive. Make predictions about future events, like the one shown on the slide. What is my predicted sales number for next quarter? And the last one is prescriptive. Some people may be, may be confused, right? So it's find out the best course of action on a given situation. Um, a very good example is autonomous driving. So the cars make tons of calculations and decide you know, when to speed up, when to slow down, turn left or turn right. So you can see, right, to get summary or conclusions in the past is business intelligence. To take actions now or make predictions in future is AI. To me, AI is not a new thing. It's an extension of BI. So if you have a solid BI foundation, you will have a much higher chance to win in AI. If you don't, then I will highly suggest you to build one. So let's say if you have a good BI system, it's much easier for you to start looking for a good problem in the right analytics category for a good AI use case. So now we have good use case, then what about data? You need to have data, and if you don't, start collecting today. Think about the problem you're, you're trying to solve and what might be relevant. Sometimes it's easier, but sometimes not. To judge if you have the right data for training the model before you're actually doing it. If you have different kinds of data in trying to decide, okay, where should I start? I will recommend you to start with structure one. So according to a research, Data in this basic form, structured data, is likely to drive the most AI's impact. Why? Because you should have structured data sitting in some sort of database or data warehouse, like sales data, user data, product data. It's processed, so you don't have to have a separate pipeline to transform it. Even if you need, it may be some minimal activities like changing formats, converting types. It's organized and clean, so you can quickly run queries to determine the basic patterns and trends. Okay, so let's say we have a use case, we have data, let's build some TensorFlow models, or should you? So we have an AI problem solved, we have the relevant data, and now let's take a look at tools. There are many tools on the market, different kinds, different names, different requirements. I put them into two categories, building blocks and platform. Building blocks, which you can mix and match, there are different components and build something that fits your needs. Here we have API service, for example, NLP, vision, translation, and more. For API services, it's the easiest way to start using AI. Because in terms of ML process, you don't need to create or train anything at all. It's our data, our model, and all you need to do is to feed in the input and get your results right away. And also we have AI platform, where we provide integrated tool chain to let you bring your own data, 
build your own model in a managed fashion. So due to the time limitation today, I am not going to discuss the Kubeflow, but welcome to connect and discuss offline. So what if you want something in between? So Cloud AutoML gives you the capability. You want to train models, but you don't have enough data. Or you have the right data, but would like to simplify and accelerate the modeling process. Then you should use AutoML. AutoML gives you a very good foundation of model you can train upon. So it's your data, our model, but you can customize to get your own models based on your need with less amount of data and much faster time. So now let's take a look at API service in AutoML. So first, let's quickly go over the API services. For common use case, you can start using proven pre-trained APIs right away without worry about training models. There are many types of service, right? Depend, depending on the kinds of data that you have and also the use case that you want to solve. It's very easy to add site, language, conversation, and virtual assistant into your applications. The biggest advantage is that you will always have the immediate access to the latest fully trained model without going through the entire pipeline. You're able to adjust certain parameters, but the capability for tuning or customizing the model is limited. Some people may think, okay, this is not AI because there's no TensorFlow, there's no PyTorch. To me, this is actually great AI. And we spend huge effort to make AI accessible for more people. The underlying technology is very sophisticated, built and maintained by hundreds of Google engineers. And we make it simple for you to use. So AI itself is very complex, but why should we make it more complex to use? Just like cars. Cars are very complex in terms of design and manufacturing, but almost everyone can operate and you can steer to the direction that you want. And very soon, it might take you to the destination automatically. So to me, as long as we use the right tool to solve the right problem, it's a good solution. But what if you prefer to build something yourself? You want to have your own model. So instead of building a model from really ground up, AutoML will give you the capability to build and deploy a custom model with less effort in shorter time. So similar to API services, now you can use AutoML for vision, video, NLP, translation, and of course, structured data. All you have to do is provide your training data as input, and we automatically take care of the remaining steps for you to deploy a high quality model into production. Sounds like magic, but science. So it's a tool to enable your entire team, right? Not just data scientists, but also analysts, developers to quickly pick up AI skills. As I stated earlier, I personally really like structured data for a number of reasons. So let's talk more about AutoML table, which focus on handling such data. So first, how does AutoML table work? Automatic table can guide you through the full end-to-end -end machine learning lifecycle, making it easy for anyone on your team to build models and reliably incorporate them into broader applications. Let's start from the beginning. So you feed your data into automatic table system. You define features and label on the UI or through API. Automatic table helps you to um, on your data preparations. It helps you create clean, effective training data by providing information about missing data, correlation, cardinality, and also distribution of each of your features. So when you start training, automatic table automatically performs common feature engineering for you, including normalized, bucketized numeric feature, create one-hot encoding and embeddings for categorical value, 
basic processing of text features extracts date and time from timestamp. So once your model is ready, an API endpoint will be provided for you to evaluate the model. And once you feel confident about your custom model, you can do one click to deploy and integrate with your existing applications. You may say that's it. What happened to the training? All right, let's talk about training. So step one, training. We designed something called parallel model testing. So when you click train in Automa table, it takes your data set, features and label, they start training for multiple data architectures at the same time with different parameters, including you know, the list that you can see on the slide, regression, deep neural network, decision tree. And we'll keep improving the system by adding more models when they come out. So this approach enable Automa table to determine what is the best model for your data. Step two is evaluation. So once Automa table determines the best model for your data, we then train two more models using the parameters and architecture we determined in parallel testing phase. First model is trained by your training and validation sets. So with your test set to provide a model evaluation on this model. The second one is a model train with your training, validation, and test set. So this model is going to be the one for you to make predictions. And we understand it's important to explain how your data relates to the final model and to the predictions that it makes, right? Especially in a managed system. So we provide you with two primary ways to gain insight. We give you the feature importance graph. So you can see which features contribute the most to model training and individual predictions. You can also export test data. So it give you the insight into how your model is performing on individual rows of training data. And you can also understand what types of predictions your model performed poorly on and might provide clues into how you can improve your data for a higher quality model. All right, so everything sounds cool. How about accuracy? It's AI, so we care about accuracy, just like you, and maybe more. So here's the industry benchmarks that we have done. The results speak for themselves. Cargo competitions. So I'm not sure how many of you have participated before. So use real data from real company that's putting a lot of money for price to get you know, good solution. And sometimes they're willing to wait months to get result. And thousands of serious data scientists around the world participate in the contest. As you can see, so some of the use case may be lower, but alternate tables usually in the top 25. I personally really like Automa table because I can do many things with it. I can, of course, quickly build a model without spending a lot of time from you know, tuning and training a model. Or I can quickly validate my data if I really want to build something. So very quickly to sum up, for Automa table, if you want to use, first, you need to have a larger and more complicated data set. Second, you know how to create good training data. And third, you would like to get quality results fast, right? We give you results in hours instead of days or weeks. All right, I think I just finished what I want to cover today. So let's recap. First, decide a good ML problem. Think about the use case, Think about predictive and prescriptive analytics to make recommendations on given situation or make predictions on something that might happen in the future. Second, spend time with data. If you have data, understand it. Find out what they are and what you can do with it. If you don't have data, define it well before collecting. Think about the use case you need and what might be needed in the future. Three, 
think about the process. So AI is not just about building a model. It's a data workflow. How you want to process, store, analyze, train, and predict. How do you handle the scalability? Do you want it to be repeatable? Do you want it to, to be flexible to customize into different pipeline for other use case? Do you want it to be portable, right? So you can train in one place and deploy anywhere else. And the last one is choose the pathway that fits. Don't limit yourself in TensorFlow, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, or any frameworks. Explore the options available. Make yourself more productive by selecting the right tool. All right, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for joining my session. Uh, my name is Elliot Lee. Have a wonderful day.